what it call is what it call is what it do Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this service today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that by the ministering of your word, Lord God, Father God, that burdens would be removed, Lord God, yokes destroyed, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that today, Lord God, we have access, Lord God, Father, to unlimited, Lord God, unmerited favor, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that today, Lord God, we decide to restore our connection, Lord God. We decide, Lord God, to rebuild, Lord God, Father God, the conduits, Lord God, to the kingdom of heaven, to cause, Lord God, your realities, Lord God, to show forth, Lord God, through us here on earth, Lord God. And we seal that prayer, Lord God, with an amen and a hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. You guys can have your seats. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning. Glory to God. So before I actually get into the teaching, there's something I got to address. And I have to address this as Brother Dale. Can I do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you guys know that the year 2020 and 2021 was kind of difficult. You know, I feel like the enemy really tried us in those two years. Now, get this. <laughs> I'm an 80s baby, right? You know, <laughs> I'm an 80s baby. And I grew up in a time where if a bully tried you, it was very important. Matter of fact, it was, it, was, it was required that your response to that trying would be over and above what he tried you with. Let me say that again. Let me say that. I grew up in the era where if you had a conflict, you had to ensure you check that conflict and dissuade that enemy from ever approaching you again. Glory to God. The Bible in Matthew eleven twelve 12 says the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violence take it by force. The enemy's attempt during those two years was to dissuade us or to prevent us from coming into the house of God, was to disconnect us from our fellowship, disconnect us from our worship. Listen, how you recover or how you rebound from a situation is going to determine what happens next. You know that if you allow a bully to chump you, then other bullies less equipped than that bully would try your hand. Would try. I'm telling you, this season is our year of rebuild. I want you guys to step, you guys online, listen, if you can come into the sanctuary, come into the sanctuary, we take, we're, we're taking back our place, our kingdom, our house of God by force. Listen, if you got to pray even harder, if you intercede, if you got to praise on your mouth, listen, don't restrain your praise, don't restrain your worship, listen, make the devil pay for what he did and dissuade him from ever coming before us. Hallelujah. I need you to get outside of that comfort place. I need you to stretch and need you to press in and say, listen, never again will you try us this way, enemy. Never again will you come before us all the days of your life. Why? Because we're rebounding. We're reconnecting and we're ensuring that the kingdom of God move through us. And this is a charge to you guys. Whatever you are doing, whatever you have been doing, turn up the volume. Press a little harder. If the enemy attack you in your finances, turn it up. Turn up your giving. If the enemy attack you in your health, turn up your, your, your worship. Turn up your outreach. Listen, if the enemy attack your home, you take that same way he attacked you and you attack his kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited. Okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm back now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I got a demonstration to show you guys the title. We're continuing with the, what mom's teaching that they started last week. It was uh, Divine Setup for Progress. You guys been enjoying that teaching? <laughs> so our title today is Restoring Connectivity Through Your Giving. Now, if you were here doing, uh, I guess, the graduation service, I told a little bit of my background. <laughs> I've been in the communica uh, communication industry for roughly 18 years, uh, deal with a lot of IT stuff, a lot of networking stuff. And then when mom mentioned about being plugged in, it really connected to me because that's my field, that's my specialty. I spend so much time in it, I can troubleshoot an issue 
within uh, 30 minutes, something that uh, I guess a customer could have had problems with for a year, I can figure out the problem within 30 minutes because I know what to look for. Glory to God. So let's break out this example. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, glory to God. I got three things for you. Glory to God. Amen. All right, cool. So what this is right here, this right here is consider your source. This would be representative of your service provider. This is the source of all information. In our scenario, for the purpose of this teaching, this is the kingdom of God. Now let's go to first, we're going to go to the Corinthians 8 through 6, 8 verse 6. And I just want to give you a scripture just to really drive that home. Hallelujah. Let me get this up here, right? All right, cool. So again, this is your source. So 1 Corinthians 8, 6 in the Amplified says that, Joe, you can put that on the screen if you want. It says, yet for us, there is but one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. We exist for him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things that we have been created and we believers exist and have life and have been redeemed through him. The purpose of that is the source. The Father is the source. Now, that's that right there. Can you guys see okay? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I got this piece right here. This is your pastors. This port right here, your pastors. This housing is your local church, right? So God's divine purpose and this cord is the Holy Spirit. This is the transition point between the source to the local church, your pastor. So once this is plugged in, once that's connected, what's on the source is now in the local church. It's now coming through your pastors. Now you, let me read that scripture, glory to God. We're going to go through, well, we're going to talk about this, this connection right here. This is the Holy Ghost. Now the scripture I have for the Holy Ghost is John 16, 13. That's in the Amplified. It says, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Okay, got it. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, full and complete truth. For he will speak, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. Glory to God. So by connection from your pastor, your pastor has the, the inherent revelation wisdom of God flowing through them, through their connection to the source. So where do you fit in this place, in, the, in this system? You are the computer. Right? That you are the device. This device does not have access to the source unless it's plugged in. Listen, if you work in any type of office building, your desk is primarily situated next to one of these devices. <laughs> if your desk is not situated next to one of these devices, you have a long enough connection to reach that device. Let me make it plain for you. I don't care where you're coming from. You have a long enough connection to tap into your source, your, your pastors, the, the, the word of God that's flowing through them. You, listen, you, you reorganize, reshape, and restructure things to make sure you have a direct connection to your source. Why? Because the only way God's going to funnel what he desires to do in you is through your connection of your pastors. Glory to God. So let's go over the scripture for us, the device. That's John 15, 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and have appointed you and placed you and purpose, purposely planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name as my representative, he may give you. All right, cool. So the purpose of the computer is to interface with the world. Come on. You guys, put this, this is parables right here, but it's using networking. So the purpose of the computer is to interface with the world. So if somebody wanted to experience the kingdom of God, all they have to do is access or tap into you that's flowing the kingdom of God. Then they have access to the provider. 
<laughs> Glory to God. They have access directly through the source, through their connection to their passage, which links back to the service provider, the source of all, the kingdom revelation. Listen, when you're flowing based on the kingdom revelation, you can move in light speed. You're at the, you're, you're, you're ahead of any updates. You're ahead of any turmoil. You're ahead of anything that might happen in the earth. Why? Because you're plugged in. You're tapped in. So if I take this connection, you guys can see me. I plug it into the path. Now, this is your connection. This is where we have an uh, error at. You plug into the pastors. You tap into the pastors, right? And you tap into your device. I'm going to just put this under here because this is a new computer. don't have an RJ45 port. Different technology. <laughs> so you're plugged in, right? So if you think about it, I did a study of uh, some statistics. Amazon says they do 4,000 or sell 4,000 items every minute. <laughs> 4,000 items every minute, right? So in my industry, a down connection for but 30 minutes puts you at, what, 120,000 items of unsold goods? Now, if you multiply the 120 items of unsold goods by an average price of $5 per item, the company loses $600,000 per 30 minutes of down connection. That's deep, right? Imagine what you're missing out on for every minute that you're not connected to the kingdom of God. 30 minutes time frame. 30 minutes. The kingdom of God is available. A source is oh, it's just a waiting for you to be plugged in, tapped into your, 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 your pastors, right? Glory to God. So how you value this connection is going to play a major role in what you receive and what you're able to do in the earth. Glory to God. Now, have you ever used a computer that was offline? So your computer that is offline means that you don't have access to certain information. The only access you have is to whatever stored on this device. And as soon as the update comes, you can't access anything. Matter of fact, if you go too long disconnected from the source, your computer will be pretty much worthless. Because your computer is not up to date to handle the new revelation that's coming from the source. Listen, glory to God. I know we're talking about kingdom giving and we're going to get there, but I want you to see this example of you being connected. Glory to God. So get this. The first question when I go to a customer, when I was in the field, I'm in corporate office now. They, they, they jailed me to an office. That, that's not a hand clap. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a combination. But the truth is, when I go to a, a customer's uh, facility or space and they say, Dale, we have an issue with our connection, the first thing I ask is, has it ever worked? I'm going to ask you. Has your connection to the house of God ever worked? If they say no, it has never worked, then I understand it's not a, it's a, it's an issue somewhere else. But it, it, if it has worked before, there's an issue with their connection. So nine times out of ten, the simple fix to this customer's down internet is plugging their patch cord in. It's simple, it, for me, it's a 30-minute fix that customers pay over $2,000 for for me to step in and pop in at something they can do themselves. I pop in their patch cord, I write them the bill, and I leave. 30 minutes, I'm in and out. <laughs> Why? Because it was as simple as them just connecting <laughs> into their outlets. So I say this, a lot of our issues and a lot of the problems that we're having experiencing is not because the flow of God is not happening. It's not because it's not available for you. It's not an issue with the pastors, the jack. The connection from this to the source is intact. It's flowing. It's ever-present. But the real issue is, are you connected fully into your source, into the means that God desires to flow information to you? Listen, information in these days is like currency. You don't know the websites sell your information to other organizations to market ads to you for currency. <laughs> information is currency. Glory to God. So let me jump back into my notes. So if I were to open up this patch cord, if I were to open up this cord, your connection to the kingdom of God or your connection to your pastors, you would see that there are four different pairs. Can you guys see this? This is straight telecommunications 101. <laughs> There's four different pairs. So each pair has a function. And each function is, is, is 
necessary for a good connection. If one of these pairs are not operating or one of these pairs are cut or damaged, the network connection does not work. <laughs> and I'm saying that because mom and dad went over a couple of points yesterday that connect you to your divine progress. They said that honoring the office of the, of the pastor, let's say that this is this blue pair, right? If you notice that each pair has two strands, the strands is a transmit and a receive, is a communication and a reception. <laughs> in each of these functions, in honoring your pastor, there is a communication and there is a reception. You're communicating. We're talking about giving now. <laughs> In your connection to your house of God, to the source, in, in the specific pair of you honoring the, 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 the mantle and the office of your pastor, there is a, is a transmission and a reception. There is a give and a take, a give and a take. Then they talked about honoring the word of God. We're going to say this is this blue strand. I'm going to hold it up so everybody can see. <laughs> it's this blue pair. Mom said that this was considered valuing the word of God that's preached either by the pastors or delegated authority. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> transmit and receive. Listen, the receiving is as important as the transmitting. <laughs> the receiving is as important as God did not just set you up just to give. He did not just set you up just to receive. You are to receive and give. A receiving and giving nature allows a flow to happen. It, it, allows, it allows the blessing to come into you and allows the blessing to be released from you. It's, it's a transmission. It's a network. Glory to God. The other one was giving financially. This is what we're going to talk about today. Again, it's a giving and receiving. You're not only to give, you're, you're also supposed to expect, listen, a harvest from your giving. Your giving was never meant to be solely routine. No, routine and repetition is a good thing as long as you maintain the passion and intent as when you first gave. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Repetition is good as long as you maintain the passion, listen, and in intent as when you first gave. You need to be excited in every given as the first time you had an opportunity to give. <laughs> you need to stir up your faith with an expectation. Listen, like my giving communicates. Listen, my heart to God. My giving blesses God. My giving endorses the kingdom. Listen, God, I may not have much, but what I do have, I can communicate with you that which I do have. That which you have already entrusted me with. Listen, it was God that gave it to you in the first place. Your wealth did not originate from you. Sometimes we take for granted things that we see consistent in our lives when, it re when the reality is you live and breathe and have your being because God provided it for you. So when he asks it of you, you need to freely give. <laughs> Glory to God. When, when God asked Abraham for Isaac, he didn't ask him for nothing that he didn't give him. Is he an unjust God because he asked him for something that he already had given him? Listen, before God, inter before God interceded on Abraham's behalf, Abraham was, was, was childless. Abraham didn't have a child anyway, so why is it hard for us to give God back the thing that he had already given us? <laughs> it's God's anyway. Everything is God's anyway. Glory to God. Last pair. Let me get back to what I'm talking about. Last pair. This is a serving. We're going to cover that in the future services, but this is Serving as a transmission, and you're going to be served, and you're going to serve. Glory to God. So when these are fully intact, fully operational, and plugged into your pastors, your source, you allow the kingdom of God to flow through you to operate this device that you would have a physical expression with the earth. The way that God governs or the way that God uh, begins to, to, to rule the earth is through us. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Instead of God physically going, instead of Jesus saying, I have to be everywhere at all times, he said, I'll send the Holy Spirit that will come dwell in you, that you would be extensions of me. <laughs> you are to interact with the world by way of the kingdom of heaven. See, when, <laughs> when the kingdom of heaven is your source, you're not limited to the changes that undergo on the earth. <laughs> 
If your finances is solely based on the earth, that means you have to shift every time the earth shifts. And if you know that the economy is crazy, you would never be able to keep up with shifting how the economy shifts. You would never be able to keep up with how politics shift. The only way that you can keep up ahead of the world's turn is that you would be connected to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God gives you insight, foresight, and allows you to operate ahead of the curve. Listen, Joseph operated ahead of the curve when there was a famine. Listen, in Egypt, what did he say? He said, I know a famine was coming. He said he was, he was affected by the famine, but he was not impacted by the famine. Why? Because God gave him wisdom how to store before the famine came, that when the famine came, he did not experience or have to deal with, listen, the memories of what it felt like to be in a famine. (laughs) Glory to God. Why? Because he was connected to the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. So in this demonstration, there are three different states of connectivity. We have people that are fully plugged in, right? (laughs) So when you're fully plugged in, that means all four pairs are intact. You're honoring your pastors. You're valuing the word of God. You're giving financially out of the abundance of your heart with joy in your giving. Listen, and you're serving with the same joy and your intent is uh, it's a mode of worship to God as a sacrifice for you, but for the joy set before you, you're willing to do it. It is a willing offering. Nobody has to force you, prime you, or pump you up to give. Listen, when you understand the only reason I'm here, breathing, I have my being, because God gave me life. <laughs> Sometimes I think we take for granted that our life is not our own. <laughs> you were bought. <laughs> You were bought with a price. So the life you now live, listen, is not of the flesh, but it's of the Son of God that loved you, listen, and laid down his life for you. <laughs> you don't have the right to make your own decisions. You do have the option, but you don't have the right. Why? Because your soul is indebted to God. Your life is now transitioned to live by the, by the Spirit of God to honor, listen, to continue the work of Jesus. Glory to God. So a person that's fully connected, fully tapped in, is hitting all of these points and seeing, listen, the kingdom of God being realized in their life. The different state of uh, connectivity is disconnected. You're not tapped in at all, right? You're going throughout, you're, you're operating, or uh, thank you. You're operating on on limited revelation, limited wisdom. You're not tapping into anything supernatural. And a lot of people get disconnected for several different things. You can be disconnected because somebody offended you. You can be disconnected because you don't like the color of this jack. You say, listen, I don't like the fact that that jack is orange. I wanted a blue jack to minister to me. (laughs) I, I, I wanted a different style faceplate. I want, I want a stainless steel faceplate to minister to me. When the stainless steel faceplate and the color of jacks, it, it, it has nothing to do with the power of God that's moving through them. Listen, how would you deny, listen, how would you deny the power of God for the sole purpose that you don't like the color of this jack? For the sole purpose, you don't like the way that I don't like squares. I like circle outlets in my office. You're not going to allow God to do what he wants to do through you because you have an issue with how, listen, that the messenger looks. Glory to God. They are but extensions of the kingdom of God. They didn't put themselves there. They were sat there by the service provider. Listen, the service provider owns everything and is responsible for everything from the jack, listen, to the connection. The Holy Spirit, the the, the men and women of God, they're sat there by the service provider, by God, the kingdom of God. They're set in place. So the issue is never with their connection. It's with your connection. People call blaming something's wrong with my wire, my kid. That's one of the, the famous things I get. There's something wrong with the cable is damaged. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the cable. See, what happened was while you were working, your foot knocked your jack out and you become disconnected. <laughs> but you start blaming everything else. You start blaming everything else when the issue was just get back connected. Plug back in. Listen, you might have accidentally did it. You didn't know you're not. We can accidentally become disconnected. 
<laughs> we can be deceived or, or, or just lose track of how we are to connect with the kingdom of God. We can lose track with the joy in our giving. I mean, I'm not saying this because this is something that I'm preaching to you. It's something I had to, you know, check myself with. You have to recheck, like, are you still celebrating in your giving? Remember the first time where you were, you, your first time you gave, it was such a joy. You shouted. You know, your first paycheck, you came out with your 10% plus your additional offering, and you celebrated. You like, God, I so thank you. I so honor you. And you remember how when you sowed that seed, you saw a supernatural harvest. I remember a time in my, my, my wife and I's life where every time we opened the mailbox, it was checks coming through. I was like, bless God. You know what I'm saying? But that was connected to God telling me and my wife, he said, I want you to mirror your uh, offering with your tithe. So whatever you give tithe, give the same with your offering. And listen, let, let, me, let me tell you, I wasn't making a lot. Listen, <laughs> I'm blue collar, I was blue collar <laughs> through and through back then. And listen, the money came tough, right? <laughs> But when God gave me that decree, I had to stir myself up because, listen, I'm not, my wife is super spiritual. She'll jump on as soon as he here. I got to let it process. I got to walk around and pray a little bit. Father, I thank you, Lord, get the revelation. It'll probably take me a week or so before I commit to it. Listen, but once I commit, I'm locked in. <laughs> so she was like, every time, I told you guys this story, every time it came to give it, um, I would look at my wife. She was like, you know, um, the Lord want us to give an amount of money, and I'm looking at her, and I'm remembering, you know what I'm saying, how I got to walk around four times to get the, 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 the amount to really sink into my spirit. So I would take what I would plan on giving, and I would multiply it by 10, and I would say, okay, this is what you want to give. She's like, yeah. So I, I'm like, bless God. Go back to praying, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation of wisdom. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, Every time that I obeyed God where my finances were concerned, I saw God show up. There was a time, quick testimony, <laughs> there was a time where my wife just got a job. Uh, she, didn't, <laughs> she didn't file her paperwork right when she got the job. And she filed as, like, exempt, right? So they wasn't taking no taxes out of her check. And I'm like, oh, you're making some good money. We go, <laughs> we go to do our taxes, man. They were like, Dale, you owe such and such thousands of dollars. I'm just not, you know, <laughs> my heart just dropped in my stomach. But guess what? Because the Lord told me to match my offering with my time, it put me in a giving status that allowed that I actually got money <laughs> from my giving. Listen, your, your giving will protect you. Listen, from the adversary, your giving will cover you. Glory to God. See, y'all always do this to me. I got a head of myself. Always do this. All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to talk about, jump ahead, we're going to talk about partially connected. Well, partially connected, as I was saying, was one of those pairs were, were severed or not working. So a person is partially connected. You know, we're going to talk about partially connected where experienced givers are. An experienced giver who has been given over a period of time that has become partially connected has lost sight of what their seed is doing in the earth. That they lost sight that, or, or the connection that, listen, when I give, it empowers or, or, or causes pathways for the word of God to be preached throughout the nation. <laughs> when I give, it supports, listen, the preached word of God. My giving, listen, glorifies God. If I'm connected to God and I'm grateful for what he's done in my life, then my giving should represent that gratitude. So I'm not giving because I'm uh, scared of a curse. And let me tell you, what the curse is that you're limited to living from the world's resources. <laughs> That's what the curse, I used to think the curse was like you walk outside, a piano go fall on your head, you can die, something like that. The curse is you limited to living to the world's resources, to what happens in the world. Your, <laughs> your progress, your, your provision is only limited to what the world could produce. How do I know that? Because at the beginning, the curse on on Adam was that he would only reap from the sweat of his brow. That was the curse. Through toil he would reap. That's the curse. So those are people that experience believe that are partially, they lost sight of the vision. Listen, they might have stopped honoring the man and woman of God so they're not able to allow, listen, what's on them to, to jump on us, to operate through us. Or they just lost sight of expecting a harvest. <laughs> you, 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 we became so used to giving that we didn't add 
an expectation without giving. We started to think the word of God is not working, but the reality is we didn't add an expectation. <laughs> you connect to your giving out of gratitude to God and you're thankful for pushing the mission, but you're also required to have an expectation for your giving. Listen, the world needs to see you in your prosperity and stop listening, glorifying worldly idols who have possessions that you don't have that are walking in anointing and blessings that we're not walking in because we're not fully connected. Listen, if somebody from the world, like, say, Floyd Mayweather, could master a craft and become a billionaire off of mastering one craft, Floyd Mayweather isn't a politician. <laughs> he could do one thing. He can box. But he applied all his effort and energy to boxing, what caused him, listen, to... to, to be able to call for multi-millions of dollars into himself because he perfected one thing. But what if we, as children of God, perfected this thing called giving? What if we perfected our connection, listen, to our source, honored our pastors, valued the word of God, begin to serve and cause the kingdom of realities to begin to filter through us? The world doesn't even know what the kingdom looks like because we haven't really tapped in. They're in awe of the world because we didn't show them what true wealth looked like, true prosperity looked like. We didn't show them what it looked like for a believer to step into a place and command the presence in that place. We didn't show them how it looks for you to speak a word and see healings manifest out of the word you speak. We didn't show them. Why? Because we haven't been fully connected. Those who have not given or, or, or potential giver, I'm going to call you potential givers, those that are potential, you have to understand the power of your seed. Understand the power of your giving. Listen, it calls the word of God to be shed abroad. Listen, and there is nothing more powerful than the word of God on the inside of the heart of a believer. If you're concerned with people's souls, if you have a brother, sister, mother, cousin, or somebody that you want, you, you wish that they would get their lives right, listen, sow your seed. Place an expectation. <laughs> Call your heart. Listen, when you sow, you name your heart of God. I have a need for this, and I'm releasing my harvest in faith, Lord God, and I stamp my seed. And I keep a record of my, listen, you need to remember and keep record of every seed you sow. <laughs> Why? Because it might not come immediately, but when it comes, you need to glorify God that he heard your prayer. Listen, <laughs> glory to God. I said this in my last teaching. When God begins to birth the things that you've prayed for in the past, things that you've sown, seen or in the past, and you get to a point where you no longer want it because you prayed for it so long ago, you've renewed your heart. You need to receive that from God because that is indeed an answer prayer. When you don't receive what God has done, you're making it seem like he's not working. In your mind, you're making it seem like God is not hearing and God is not moving on what you, you're making it seem like your seed doesn't work. When if you look closely, God has already provided for many of you guys' seeds. You prayed for protection, and you were driving, and somebody tried to hurt you. You swear God protecting you because of your seed. <laughs> your child was in such and such place doing such and such they wasn't supposed to do. God protected you because of your Listen, your seed is doing things that you don't even know it's doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you guys. You can stand to your feet. I got a lot. I mean, I always got a lot, but it is what it is. I want to encourage you guys, like, if you are an experienced giver, I want you to lock back in. You, you've been giving for a period of time now. We've entered a season where you have been affected by certain things. You might have been discouraged, might have been disheartened, and it caused you to draw back on your seat. This is what I said when I started. Go again. Turn up the volume a little harder. Press a little more. Put a greater expectation on the kid. Get reconnected. And if you have never given before <laughs> and you're straddling that, straddling that line where you're trying to decide if you're going to give or if giving's worth it, listen, take it from me. My house, my wife, we have been blessed. For years, we've operated off of one income. And that was, so, and I ain't trying to say I made a whole bunch of money. I did well, but what covered us was the blessing of the Lord. 
it was God making all things right for us. Listen, I'm talking about through, through recession. I'm talking about through economic downturn, through all kinds of issues that happen in our life. We travel 60 miles to church, you know, every, every Sunday and Tuesday, but God never stopped providing for us. We never fell short. We never lacked anything. Glory to God. Because we stay connected. We honored our, our pastors. Listen, every time they preached the word, we were there. We sat under their teaching. We took their word literal. See, a lot of people hear your pastors preaching. You allow it to go over your head. I told you I'm the type of person, when I buy something, I put it on the first day. I don't even step out of the store with it in the bag. I'll, I'll pop the shoes open put it on out there. I take my shoes and throw, <laughs> throw them away, and I walk out fresh. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if when you sat under the Word of God, you popped that <laughs> Word on, you threw whatever you had away, and you step out of the sanctuary fresh. Imagine if you were that intentional about tapping into the Word of God and proving it. Imagine if every time somebody ministered on this pulpit, you received it as if it was coming directly from God. Because indeed it is. One thing I mentioned is that God put you in the place and connected you to that outlet for a person. You were called to that place. You were meant to tap into that. God prepared a special word that only you could receive. He placed you in that place solely because he wanted you to connect to that flow. You have all the provision. You have all the resources available for you. The only thing you have to do is tap in. Glory to God. So I encourage you guys. Listen, let's take back and make the enemy pay for all the years <laughs> that we have been uh, <laughs> restricted from fellowshipping together. We have been limited from embracing one another. Let us soak this atmosphere and restore our church to the glorious church. Hallelujah. You guys can lift your hands. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that today, Lord God, Father, is a day that has placed a mark, Lord God, in eternity, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that today, Lord God, that our hearts have shifted, Lord God, Father, and connected back to you, Lord God. Father, we cast down, Lord God, nullify, Lord God, anything, Lord God, that's hindering us, Lord God, for tapping into, Lord God. Father, your flow, Lord God. Father, but we honor our pastors, Lord God. We honor the word, oh God. Father, we give because freely it has been given to us, oh God, and we serve, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, because you serve, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that our realities, Lord God, our kingdom realities, Lord God. We thank you that we shall decree a thing and see a thing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we come second or behind, Father, in no good thing, Lord God. We thank you that we prosper and increase, Lord God, in all things good, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are walking, Lord God, vessels of your presence, oh God. So allow, Lord God, your anointing to permeate us, Lord God, and cause impact, Lord God, in society, Lord God in the realms we worship, Lord God, in the realms we work, Lord God, allow, Lord God, all of you, Lord God, Father, to ooze through us, Lord God, to cause your kingdom realities, Lord God, to manifest, Lord God, here in this earth, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go right into offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I know you heard a good word. And I'm not boasting on myself. I'm just saying, listen, God used me. You heard a good word. Now let's communicate with your giving. Let's communicate with your generosity. Listen, the way that you prove the word you heard is by an action. Everything that God calls or, or, or faith has an act, a corresponding action. When Moses led uh, the Israelites out of Egypt, he came before the Red Sea and God told him to lift up the staff. The sea was not going to just part because he came to the brink or, or came to the, to the edge of the sea. He had to perform an action. So let's solidify what we heard today. Let's make an expression, listen, throughout the earth that, God, you be glorified in our giving. God, we are connected to you, and we are not limited, Lord God. Father, to the resources of the world, Lord God. 
Hallelujah. So if you have your seed ready, you can lift it up. Again, we have three forms of giving. You can either give online, which is my favorite option. <laughs> you can text uh, text to give at VCMIDC 22300, or you can get an envelope. Go to the back. There are buckets in the back that you can drop your, your seed or your giving off when you leave. Glory to God. So let's lift it up. Let's celebrate. I want you to make a commitment. Listen. Before you get, I don't know, if it's a Sunday morning, you need to sit your seat aside on a table. You need to worship and celebrate, pray over before you get here. So when you release it, you can release it with an expectation, with power and glory to God. So we're going to lift up our seat. Father, we thank you, Lord God, Father, for your awesome provision, Lord God. We understand, Lord God, Father God, that the 100% is yours, Lord God. Father God, and you have given us, Lord God, right, Lord God, to do with, Lord God, the 90, Lord God. So we glorify you in our giving, Lord God. We return unto you that which you have given to us, O oh God. Father, with a heart of gratitude, Lord God, with the understanding, Lord God, Father, that if we give, Lord God, it shall be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and runneth over, Lord God. So together we command our seed to go and grow and suddenly return unto us. Amen. Hallelujah. I bless it up. Glory to God. And before we go, we can't end this service without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus, to come into your heart and into your life. It is the greatest decision you can ever make. And it's as simple as just believing with your heart and confessing this prayer. And here at Victory, we don't let you do anything by yourself. We are a family. So I'm going to ask every head bow, every eye closed. We're going to repeat this together. And if this is your first time saying this prayer, I want you to believe it with everything on the inside of you. Today is your day to come on a journey with Jesus. Amen. Say, Lord, I come to you as I am. You know my life and how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. I give you my life. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer for the very first time, you are saved. All of heaven is rejoicing with you. This is the best decision you could ever make in your life. And so with that, we say welcome to the family. You have a very important next step that you need to do. You need to get connected and find out exactly what happened to you. So we ask that you text our Victory Connect number. Text hashtag VCMIDC to 22300. Whether you said that prayer in person or online, text that number. And we have men and women of God that are going to get back with you. After you do that, your very next big step is you need to get connected to a Bible-believing ministry. And I can't think of a better one than here at the Household of Victory. Our man and woman of God always say, I'm not building a church, I'm raising a family. And we invite you to be a part of our family. Whether you've been visiting for a while, you don't have a church home, or you just got saved, Victory is the home for you. So we say, welcome home. If you're here and you feel like, hey, I need to rededicate. I just need to get back on track. I let the cares of this life completely distract me from my purpose and what I'm called to do. And what is our purpose as believers? To live out the life of Jesus and find our part in it. And if you fell off in that, you want to rededicate, that's available to you as well. Also, if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you need that in this season. It's not weird. It's not spooky. It is a part of your salvation package and it is available to you so any of those four things salvation joining our family rededication or baptism of the holy spirit text our victory connect number hashtag vcmidc to 22300 click the prompt and we have prayer warriors that will respond to you within 24 hours amen